He's essentially a trust fund kid. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. CC here, Chris from uh, from New York. Uh, I thank you for, for subbing. I thank you for viewing. Uh, I thank you for letting me in your life and listening to me. Um, and giving you other ideas of this reality that we live in. Um, you know, in the morning, I, I'm used to waking up very early. I never used to be a morning person, but when I took those videos, the very last one that I took of the uh, chemtrails, um, I was up at like 4.30 in the morning, and I could see them sp starting to spray right, right there. And, and again, it continues pretty much throughout the entire morning. Um, and then they like stop. They take a break. Maybe it's a lunch break. I, I don't know. I really don't know, but they stopped for a little bit. Okay, I just wanted to, to get into that. Um, I also wanted you to see how a small channel develops over time. You know, when I first got into this and I would go on to the big boy station, they already would have 40 or 50,000 subs, you know, or even 100,000 over there, you know, and you never got to see them develop their station, and that's why I don't believe any of them ever did, you know. Um, so, you're watching this develop with people leaving comments, good or bad. You know, if you're going to threaten me, I'm not going to answer your questions. You just make yourself look like a fool, because uh, other people are reading your comments, so, you know, if you want to continue doing that, that's fine. I don't know who these people are, if they're paying for Google if it's just some idiot stuck in a hospital somewhere with a cell phone, you know, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Um, and I really could care less, but I, I thank you for, for the positive comments. And uh, that was the whole reason for me to develop this channel, was for us to come together and write comments together and come out with ideas. You know, I know people are shy and, they, and some of them don't want to talk to me directly, and, and that's fine. You know, and I'm willing to answer your comments and stuff. As long as it doesn't go into big paragraphs, and I, it, it's difficult to do that. But, you know, my email address is there too, so you can contact me through that. Um, and that's the whole point of this. That's the point for us to communicate together and share our ideas. You know, I see one of the guys who uh, watches my, my channel, uh, very impressive. Um, he's out there showing people that the earth is flat. Uh, he was at a lake and he took a spotlight. We don't need lasers, guys. You can do whatever you want. I mean, if there's a curvature to the earth, you know, you wouldn't be able to see whether it's a spotlight or if somebody's standing all the way on the other side of the lake because there'd be an eight foot drop, you know, on, on 10 miles or, or something. Some of the lakes around here are that, that big. Um, you'll see those experiments when I do them. I, I'm just a one man job. So I would have to leave the equipment and go to the other side of the lake, and I'm afraid someone's going to take it. You know, so I'll try to figure out how to how to do it. But um, you know, that's what we all need to do. We need to go out and we need to prove to people that this is a flat plane. Forget about a computer simulation for a minute. Let's just get people on the same page that this is a flat plane that we live on. I don't know if ice walls are surrounding us. I really don't. I've never been down there before. It makes sense for them to, to surround us, you know, but in a computer simulation, you don't need them at all, you know, but I'm, I'm getting off the topic, you know. The, the whole point is to explain to people they live on a flat plane, okay? This is what you live on. The sun and the moon don't appear to be solid objects to me. I don't know if they're reflections. I don't know if they're multiple. Yes, I'm saying multiple suns up there and multiple moons. This might be a little crazy. We're working on a master's degree level now. So if you're still in high school with Flat Earth, I don't want to get too detailed with this. Because, uh, you know, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that. Uh, I'm not going to mention any more of it. I'm going to get more into it later on as you get into Flat Earth and as you accept different models of flat earth and not just one you know I'm, I'm sick and tired of people telling me you know what we live on you don't know what we live on nobody knows what we live on you haven't been all the way up there 
you don't haven't been down to Antarctica, certainly. You don't know if these ice walls are surrounding us, you know. Um, somebody brought up to me the other day in, in a comment, which was actually quite interesting. Um, you know, and we do live in a computer simulation. Why wouldn't God be a computer programmer? And I've thought about that, but I haven't really wanted to mention it because it might piss people off, you know, because God is a touchy subject with everybody. You know, we all have our own God. I do too myself. Um, I know there's a creator out there. You know, whether he created this that we live on or if it's multiple people that, that created this. You know, somebody had to have created all of this. You know, a computer simulation is simple because everything would be simulated. So we could be on a computer somewhere on somebody's desk in an office in a corporation somewhere. You, you know what I mean? You, you know what I'm getting at there? You know, but that's why I find that model hard to believe. But it's plausible, you know. It, it really is, and while I'm doing my research, it's kicking up, it's kicking open more doors, you know, in, the, in that case, especially with the sky, how we see the sky, you know, because we can only see three or maybe five miles, you know, maybe on the ocean you can see ten miles, but I mean, in the sky itself, our perspective is very small, you know, I mean, look at a sidewalk when you're walking down, like I see this in Mount Vernon all the time, straight sidewalk and then the you know the, the sidewalk comes together at some point because it's so far away and that's a perspective that you see you know and that's how you're looking at the sun so it doesn't necessarily have to be even 73 million miles away it could be a hell of a lot closer than than you think um and it's never really made much sense how it is just it should be this you know, I mean, forget about 93 million miles. We know it's not that far away. But, I mean, it, it's so precise that you can see every branch and twig from the shadow of the sun itself. You know, when it's, uh, especially when it's going down in the uh, horizon. I don't want to say sunset because I don't even believe that it's setting anymore at this point. Um, other people believe that it's going straight. You know, that their perspective makes it look like that is setting. But that's a whole different subject. That's on another video. I've got to do more research so I can present all of this properly to you. You know, um, I did want to bring up, well, okay, yeah. I mean, that that's all. I, that, more research has to be done on this, on this topic, of course. Um, and uh, you'll be hearing my reports about it, especially in the next couple of days. You know, my time itself is limited. So I, you know, when you, you, you get sucked into this vortex, when you're looking at, at, at videos from, from YouTube, you know, time just passes. All of a sudden, the next thing you know, it's two hours. And I've mentioned that to you before. And uh, that's how YouTube is. You know, it just gives you, you know, a suggestion. And then you open that up. And, you know, you know how it works. You know, but maybe that's how you found me. I, I, I don't know. Because, you know, my channel is not advertised at all. It's just up to YouTube how they put everything, stack it up. Um, the stars themselves, I, I did want to mention this be before I before I uh, go. Um, I, I, I was reading somewhere that when somebody took a high-powered telescope, something that we can't get our hands on, that only NASA has and maybe four or five people out of the entire world have the, this, this telescope, um, when they looked at the galaxies, it was almost like they're stacked up, you know, right on top of each other. Like, you know, we're meant to, to find that, you know. I, I found that interesting. Now, we'll, we'll never be able to see that because, you know, a P900 is limited on what you can see. I, I think you could probably just see planets with a P900, and that's really about it. Um, I've seen videos on it. But I'll find out and I'll show it to you once I get this camera together and everything everything going. Uh Sorry, it's raining outside. These window wipers get really loud. And, you know, once once I can get that, I'm still trying to figure that out, you know, with the downloading and stuff like that. So you, you'll, you'll see what I mean. I don't think you can see galaxies with something like that. You really need a high-powered telescope. And if anybody is watching me right now and has something like that, one of those expensive, you know, you know, real telescopes that are out there that cost like four or five thousand dollars. I'd be very curious to find out if maybe you can put a video up 
and, and show us, you know, one of these galaxies that we'll never be able to see. We'll just have to see how they want us to see it by CGIing it and, and making all these weird things. That's not really what you see, you know. Um, all right. Well, I think I've said what I needed to say. There was something else I wanted to talk about. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll either make a video today or tomorrow. There's some more things I want to bring out on, uh, on this reality that, that, we, uh, that we live in. All right. Again, thank you for, for viewing it. Uh, that's all.